scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. When it has to do with the things of God, you must be discerning. Are we blessed? Because there are many, many others. Marriages that are coming, you will hear other testimonies. Rejoice with them that rejoice. And it is true, we are humans. Let me tell you, if it is God, you too will stand here. But you're not going to get it done through desperation, Facebook, WhatsApp, connections. Um, what do we call it? All these antichrist systems. It matters how you get connected to marriage. This is something you're going to do for a lifetime and don't allow that pressure. Sisters, are we blessed? Are we listening? Especially when you leave this environment and go to other fellow sisters like you who are not godly. Chances are that they will sit down. A 30 minutes discussion will water down your whole prayer and fasting. Someone will come up and tell you a horrific story. Another person will tell you something else. And please, those of us who are parents here and those following online, let me encourage us. I don't believe that any godly parent should put pressure on their children to get married just as a way of massaging their ego. We're spiritual people. The Bible says he makes all things beautiful in his own time so please you're a parent here you're a guardian let's be careful sometimes we don't pressure people directly especially for our dear sisters there are messages there are body languages that we communicate that put pressure on these people you know i counsel people and i talk to people all the time and sometimes i try to discern what is the pressure behind you know this gentleman, he can't sit down. He has become a hustler. Anything he hears that is producing money, he wants to be part of it. And the reason is because at the back of it, there's someone somewhere mounting pressure on the gentleman. At your age, I already had a house. And the guy feels guilty for being 30 and not having a house. Whereas the pathway he's taking is the pathway that will lead him to that blessing. God gives people speed, but he does not rush people. There is a difference between speed and rush. Are we together? I, I, just, I just felt like introducing this to just keep our hearts together because you see, our emotional levels are very different. There are people just for this good news you see now may not sleep for days. And that's not supposed to be an insult. It is because we live in a society that has become so emotional everything around you is speaking to your emotions this is where being spiritual comes a spiritual man is not somebody who prays in tongues a spiritual man is one who has gained stability through the understanding of who god is and the integrity of his word that's spirituality are we together now yes so it's very important we'll continue to rejoice with our people and support them but please please do not make a costly decision, especially towards the area of finance and marriage. Two important areas that no one at all who loves God. I will not know anybody I love and allow to make some of these careless decisions. By God's grace, we are here to help 
um, all our brothers sisters make the wisest decision in the different areas of our lives and where our experiences are limited we are very open to recommend you to people who we believe their wisdom is worthy of reception so please make sure that you don't make a mess of your life just because of societal pressure here and there you may be having a trouser of 20 naira have it with honor whilst you are trusting god to lift you is that true yes and um please parents have contributed and I, I say this with all respect and honor in hurting and destroying the life of young people they push us into seasons that were not directed by god there are many people crying and languishing in marriage right now there are many people whose whole lives have you know been reduced to shambles because of this mistake so it's very important remember that marriage will have children my father said something years ago that was very instructive to me he said it is parents that make mistakes children don't make mistakes so if you know that children are going to come forth from your union you should be honest enough to consider them in your decisions when you are saying yes to an ungodly man you are not only being wicked you are being selfish because children are going to come from that union and you are now submitting not just to a man you are submitting to a platform i'm not teaching on relationship tonight i'm just trying to make sure that that we are in a position where god can help us tonight are we together for me truly sometimes i get very surprised gentlemen do it but our sisters too sometimes people come to church they hear the word of the lord and you you labor do you know let me tell you this as a man of god and as a leader your greatest joy is to see people use the truths that you are teaching and their lives are changing so sometimes when i see the kind of especially marital decisions that sisters take I'm, I'm tempted to ask is it that they don't understand what we are teaching or is it that they don't attend the meetings are we together and some of you don't like me as you are looking at me like this because you have trained your mind into believing that I might be antagonistic to your agenda only an unwise person someone that has been at the focal point of your spiritual development will god now use that person to destroy you is, is that not deception already so many people run away is after they get married and go away and it backfires then you see them ringing your phone and disturbing you and saying all kinds of things just the art of humility to listen can save you i always think about the children you can do whatever you want with your life provided you have a covenant with god that you won't have children you destroy yourself and reap the consequences of your carelessness but when you are bringing a child i happen to be involved in the life of so many children and sometimes i look at them and i'm very sad because most children are paying the price for the selfish decisions some of us seated here looking at me now you have lived your life paying the price of someone's carelessness don't reproduce that same result are we together so please and please in as much as we celebrate people and all these people you see i meet with them and i talk with them i pray with them so don't just forward any wedding card when we don't know you we don't know how god helped your decision we are not irresponsible people don't just say i'm a member of koinonia usually people hide under departments like prayer band they say i'm a member of prayer band and just because they are looking for financial support no we don't do that marriage is not occult it's something to be proud of this is the wonderful lady i'm getting married to and they talk to you is proud is 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 very proud of any gentleman to believe you can outgrow guidance it's foolishness are we together is god helping us say my children will glorify god through my life say it one more time my children will glorify god 
through my life what I suffered my children will not suffer the price I paid my children will not pay it that's a good husband wife father mother hallelujah be happily married not just married be happily married be happily married being married is a choice being happily married is also another choice being uncomfortably married is also a choice the ball is in your court make a decision make a decision let your joy be preserved don't admire your single days after you get married and wish you were not married that's not a good thing especially i'm speaking for those of us who are men of god and those who are going to be called into the ministry let me tell you something there are not many things that can give a man of god joy because he's involved in pouring himself to people so the few things that are around your life that can give you joy insist that they are there prosperity can give you joy a good wife or good husband can give you joy well behaved children can give you joy a healthy church with listening members can give you joy are we together the things that give men by the grace of god the privilege that god has given me to rise in influence and a number of others who have gone before me that we've had the opportunity to talk let me tell you greatness is a very lonely realm if no one has told you learn it the life of great people is they are busy but there are not many things they don't have a system very few systems give back to them somebody did something one day here i think i've shared it and the person said apostle i want to hug you and i did like that they said no put down your hands let me hug you and suddenly it occurred to me that in years it's me that has always been hugging even when you say let's hug i'm the one who reaches out something as little as that so if if your marriage the only chance you have to be happy you ruin it because of pressure and because of saying look this is the only guy that is available and you destroy yourself you will live an angry life when dr billy graham now of blessed memory was launching his library his wife had gone to be with the lord and he stood there they were the presidents of different different um you know tenures together of the united states they were all there to cheer him up and he got up and you you thought he would talk about the whole library thing and he just made one statement he said as i'm standing here i miss my wife so terribly i said wow that's an evangelist there are many people who cannot say that forget these lies people do in the public many people are not happy they are not happy and they had a chance to be happy they rejected it but as many as received him meaning you can reject him praise god i'm talking about something else but is it all right if we take two minutes to just pray for our families our lives is that okay please pray just you can sit down just pray truly speaking pray I believe in family i am an advocate of family there is no responsible man of god no responsible man of god who wants to raise believers whose families are in shambles what prayer are you praying when your family is in shambles pray pray don't look at me some of you are looking around this is a serious business pray please lord rescue me from this 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 siege of darkness this programming of lucifer that he wants to use to destroy the destiny of a generation pray lord i speak you're married pray for your home pray for your own family too lord there will be no repetition the pain i saw growing up will not repeat itself i disallow it from being featured in my own life pray don't say i'm not in a relationship yet don't say i'm not married yet or don't say i'm already married it's too late pray 
pray i insist to be responsible i insist to provide for my family hallelujah please be seated i think if, if this is all we do tonight it was worth it somebody may be asking apostle what do i do while i wait for my miracle behave well behave well it's amazing how many people will miss the will of god because of bad behavior not demons i'm saying this especially with a bias to our sisters am i boring you is it all right if i just encourage us behave well there is unexpected behavior that opens you up many people don't behave well and we learned this from our society we don't behave well we are rude dishonor everybody we have been taught this this demonic thing that we call class is a spirit that is eating up the destinies of people most ladies call commitment and seriousness being cheap the moment you are required to put your heart in what you are doing they say no i can't be that cheap the society has sold a lie to us and we destroy our homes most brothers especially some of us that god has given a little influence this our pride is what will never allow us move forward we think we are big men we want everything to happen in life at our own terms no sir no sir marriage is not by force but if you must engage in it please think of these children please think of these children forget about yourself you can ruin your life and find something else to do but don't bring any child on earth we already have enough children on earth who are wasting away don't add to it behave yourself well behave yourself well what do i do while i'm waiting brother be serious be responsible about your life is that true be responsible coordinate your life together where am i going don't carry somebody's daughter and an ad in your life and frustrate the poor girl's life in the name of marriage now ladies should not marry men just because of a brighter future i've said it that's investment however however a brother cannot carry a lady that is not going anywhere and keep wasting her time you see many of our dear women all around suffering in the hands of visionless men it's not that they forgot where they are going they never knew where they were going from beginning that's why we counsel people that's why we talk to people that's why many people are not happy because they think that when you counsel them especially where you have to tell them no this thing mm -mm, it's not working out they get angry because in their minds you are an enemy of progress not knowing that that's you delivering them from decades of pain there are some mistakes that even if corrected can never you can never have it the way it was again are we together there are things it is best to get right once and for all thank you jesus let's get to the word koinonia is quiet were you blessed that's the work of a good shepherd to talk to you and love you too much to have. you'll be surprised that this little word now that i said is somebody's deliverance someone was about to make an unwise decision and jesus just came jesus the way showed you the way out of every nonsense please destroy any relationship that is going nowhere and you you can know that this relationship is not going anywhere get out of it immediately a man that is beating you before marriage there is nothing to pray about let him leave if there is a problem we have miracle service we finish seven days prayer and fasting if he loved god enough he should be here is that true you see the signs everywhere there are few people who get into wrong marriages not knowing it's a lie there are signs everywhere a jimmy says love is blind but marriage will open your eyes most people most people 
God showed them the signs, but they refused. They no, no, no. Oh God, I'm, you know that I'm not young. I'm not a fool. Don't think this person talking to you doesn't know what he's saying. Oh, apostle, age is not on my side. I want to have my children first. Are you the first to have children? Children are a heritage from the Lord. One Isaac. One Isaac. One Isaac. There are people with 12 children. They died fast because of those children. Do you want a child or you want a blessing? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Okay. Tonight we are going to talk along the lines of spiritual growth. I, I thought through a few things during the week and I like documenting my contemplations and that's going to be the basis of our discussion tonight. Quite a number of things. Tonight is a very serious discussion and um, I have been concerned and, and I, must, I must admit to you that it's once in a while the Holy Spirit just brings it as a burden. I have been concerned about the body of Christ generally. I think about the body of Christ. I've been concerned about our growth as a body, not just as a ministry, but as a body. I thank God for the wonderful things that we record as a corporate body, the church. But I think that one of the greatest challenges in my opinion with the body of christ is not demons it's not fake men of god it's not all of those things it's not exaggerations it's lack of growth you can know that a church is growing by seeing certain exact things happen you can know that a believer is growing our indices that we have created to measure growth needs to be balanced and guided otherwise we may fall prey of Satan's deception are we together it is the will of God that every church must grow it is the will of God that every believer must grow but then we must examine our growth very carefully second Timothy chapter 3 2 Timothy chapter 3, we'll read 16 and 17. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Read the first two words, just first two words. Ready? One, two, read. One more time. One more time. One more time. It says all scripture. This is the first error that I think the devil is bringing to the body of Christ we are gradually edging out the richness of the word in an attempt to try to create some kind of balance or create to to further our perspectives really that's the expression we have started throwing away scriptures the bible says all scripture old testament new testament genesis exodus leviticals revelations the gospels the epistles the torah the poetic books all scripture is given by what the inspiration of god and is profitable everybody say all scripture is profitable say again all scripture is profitable genesis is profitable exodus is profitable leviticus is profitable Deuteronomy, Numbers, profitable. Revelations, profitable. We, we've had all kinds of theology coming out right now that try to push some parts of the world to mean that they are not relevant in our context today in an attempt. And I'm not just talking of um, what we call the grace movement alone. Not at all. There are many people who have come up with a system did you know that even certain recent versions of the bible now are being so edited that certain uh, uh, volumes of of chapters and books are not edited taken away completely all scripture is given by the inspiration of god and is profitable number one for doctrine 
number two for what reproof three correction four instruction in righteousness next verse please 17 that the man of god may be mature perfect mature complete thoroughly furnished that means if i exempt myself from the experience of certain truths as contained in this old scripture i may be furnished but not thoroughly furnished and there is a dimension of god that i may never experience are we together now all scripture i don't take the bible and then stratify it and say i'm just for the gospels i'm just for the pauline epistles i'm just for eschatology the study of end times i'm just for the torah i'm just for this i'm just for wisdom the poetic books i'm just for the prophetic books the bible says all scripture all without reservation are we together so let let's be very careful now i i respect the body of christ by god's grace by position uh, as far as my love for the body is concerned i think that i've already communicated it in the clearest form possible that you know i love the body of christ i have extreme honor for the body but we must be careful i think we're making a serious mistake and it's going to destroy us if we neglect the truth of scripture just because it does not sound comfortable as far our, as our perspectives about god is concerned all scripture all scripture growth is something that we all long for we desire growth in any and every aspect of our lives when we talk of growth we talk of increase growth talks of increase increase in size increase in capacity increase in platforms increase in access all of these things are measures of growth increase in resources but then the, the dimension of growth that i want us to focus on is growth as increase in the comprehension of truth comprehension of truth not just acquisition of things growth as seen by our comprehension of the truth you look at the body of christ and there are many things that happen around the body that are statements statements that communicate to us that although there's action although there's a lot of motion although there is a display of gifts the gifts of the spirit but there really isn't growth and i'm concerned because if we are not growing then it means something will happen to us one day that will sabotage god's intention and desire for us are we together I was watching TV, I don't know when, when was it? And a very nice program. And then the next thing, I think the worship team there were singing and they just raised a song and I couldn't believe it. I'm not talking of a secular song. I'm talking of a senseless song, spiritually senseless. Do you know the kinds of songs? Now I'm just trying to let's reason together can i continue is, is that all right look at the kinds of songs that we sing in church especially songs that we sing for praise worship sessions it's clear that both the members and the singers don't think about what they are singing is that true is it matters don't say it does not matter we sing songs that are not consistent with god's character of operation now there are certain aspects of the faith here and there that we may disagree but foundationally there are truths that should be kicked out by every and all persons out of the body of christ those informations are not for christians they are captured in our songs everyone just writes a song and we are so concerned about the melodies we continue to sing all kinds of nonsense and rubbish we rehearse those songs we score those songs and nobody has the spiritual understanding to say something is wrong do you not know that singing is prophecy too you are speaking to the destinies of people how about teaching the word listen most of us men of god think just because you read your bible 
and you have intelligence to understand what it says it means you can teach teaching is a gift oh. teaching is a gift there is the gift that that office there is the office of a teacher but god can give you that access to understanding so the body of christ is full of knowledgeable people knowledgeable people theologians and men and women of god who are vocally sound we have oratory we have good speech command and because of that we believe that the moment you are a good communicator you can stand and just pick one scripture pick another and put them together and begin to communicate thoughts look how misled and deceived the average church member is not necessarily because the man of god is bad but his perspectives do you know that is is when you stand before people to teach you are shaping their understanding based on a viewpoint you are giving them and it matters you will be judged before god if you cause people to see life from a perspective that is erroneous so scripture says not everyone should presume to be teachers that you are quoting scripture does not mean you understand it that your teaching looks complex does not mean you understand it hmm. men of god have dappled into subjects in a christian faith that they have not had unique illumination from the spirit and we have carved out opinions and arrogantly taught those opinions and misled members so there is no growth you hear it in our songs you see how believers behave outside of church walls no character no good behavior anger everywhere now that person you see is a chief usher that person you see when it's time to lay hands that individual comes can even be the pastor himself or the pastor's wife something is wrong are we blessed is god helping us god desires that we grow i think one of the most deceptive scenarios that make us think that we are growing is the display of gifts everybody say the display of gifts spiritual gifts nothing is more deceptive than rating the spiritual growth of an individual a ministry an assembly just based on the flamboyancy of the gift now don't get me wrong if you are growing it must tell in your dispensing the power of god however using gifts as a platform for growth is a big error very big error let me tell you the truth when i pray for koinonia i, I am telling you the truth i'm not praying for the power of god to move i'm not praying that i'll be able to prophesy and speak to people no i'm praying that the communications the words of my mouth the meditations of my heart will be as revealed by the spirit you can wake me from bed and i can get up and go to a world conference and that meeting there will be such dimension of a move of god you will think i've been fasting for one year and so you will be deceived that just because you saw the power of god moving in unusual dimension this guy must be deep in the spirit it's a lie it's a lie hmm. are you getting what i'm saying now say gifts the gift of the spirit is never an accurate measure of a man's spiritual growth so there is a problem in the body of christ gifts are charismatic gifts are flamboyant when you are gifted you will have a lot of money because that's value itself people will come to you people will sow into your life you see that do you know one time i think we were in um was it three years or so ago when kano I was ministering at a PFN, a PFN conference and you know the power of God wonderful things were happening there was such a dramatic move of the spirit and all of a sudden here comes this woman this old mama she just came out I called out by prophecy and I saw something about this woman this woman reads her Bible she finishes the whole Bible like every two two or three three weeks she's an intercessor now can you imagine 
that this woman came out in honor that I called her and I would be foolish to imagine we are at the same spiritual level when that woman stood before me I saw a woman that knew God forget that she was not called into ministry nobody is inviting her the woman would have been to her it was an honor that Joshua Selman would lay his hands on her if I had my way I would just kneel down and hold her leg and say please whatever God did to you may he do to me but simply because I'm the one wearing suit Apostle Joshua Selman and everybody is seated you will see that and because the mama does not look very intelligent doesn't have all the PhDs and all of that brothers and sisters that is depth that is a dimension of relationship are we together but just because I'm standing someone is shouting outside someone we're not trivializing these things but sometimes we ourselves can be deceived if I ask you who is the most spiritual person in Koinonia now you will point to me it's a lie yo. it's a lie there was a woman called Anna the prophetess in the Bible. No crusade, no leading prayer. Even in the temple, they didn't give her any prayer point. But she was quietly seated, praying for the consolation of Israel. She prayed Jesus to appear. Let me tell you, some of the deeply spiritual people are not even in ministry. You don't know them. They are not on TV. They don't have any name. You see one old woman who wakes up 4 o'clock every year for 37 years. I don't think I have that kind of discipline. 4 a.m. Even if she sleeps by 2, by 4, she will wake up. There are women who get up and go and pray in one small local village church. They, are, they, they own the key of the church. Prayer time is 5 o'clock, but they wake up by 4. They are in the village praying, having the encounters that we brag around. That's their atmosphere of living. And yet, just because they cannot operate Facebook and they cannot make noise, we are here bragging around with our names all over Google and people think that we are the ones who are spiritual. We must be careful what we call growth otherwise we would deceive ourselves and deceive others is God speaking to us tonight I have seen people and I have met people some of them have even come for counseling when I stood before them the depth of presence they carried I'm not talking of anointing no goodness you look at them and you yourself after the counseling and prayer you, you go back and say, God, Abba, God, am I not available again? I have seen them. I have seen people. I have seen people who, this vision thing we talk about, they didn't even know that's the name of what they were having. Before people started experiencing angels, you talk to them, they will say it casually. Oh, is it that angel? He comes to me. I'm 69 years. He started coming when I was 21. Just because they've not written a book and nobody knows them. The church must be careful. Just because you have prosperity, just because you have a crowd of people outside, just because you can teach the word of God just because you have some measure of excellence those things are wonderful but they are wrong indices just because you can teach the word just because you can call someone by word of knowledge just because you can prophesy just because you can speak I can stand right now and tell you that somebody will shout outside not that God told me me Joshua Selman somebody will shout you see somebody jumping out and shouting and just because I said it and it happened, you will now look and say, ah, this guy. Only God knows what must be going. Nothing is happening. This is gift. Gift. We equate faith with money. So if I come and you look at what I'm wearing, if you think it is nice, you just say, Kai, this guy must have faith. Is that true? Is that really true? You don't like what I'm sharing this night? We have to be careful. 
the indices we have put together to measure spiritual growth is destroying the body of Christ. So there are people who will leave God. God, go places. Just give me a car and give me a suit and you wear it. And people say, my God, the word of God, you are changing in one month. A car, a house, miracle alert. Some of us believe that just because this alert entered your phone is a sign that your growth is tremendous. It's not. This is why those who don't experience those things go back and they want to give away the health of their status with God to get those things. The voice of the Holy Spirit is seldom heard in the body. Do you know you can walk in the gift of prophecy and yet not hear God? <laughs> Spirit break out Break our walls down Spirit break out Heaven come down. So I pray a lot tonight. Spirit break out. Break our walls down. Spirit break out. parameters very wrong parameters there are people who were doing well but they left what they were doing because they want to embrace other parameters as defined by the body to show you are spiritual they had a healthy prayer life they had very healthy dimensions then just because one or two areas were not there they feel intimidated when they stand if I tell you stratify men of God now according to anointing and power you say Joshua Selma you stand in front then one brother who is just a prayer warrior with his 200 naira trousers and palms you say stand behind you two are you can't you compare you will be lying you will be surprised that in the realm of the spirit I would not even see that guy not even close to him who taught us this we were wrongly mentored to use wrong parameters so those of us who God has helped to be highly gifted and anointed, we have, we have created an impression in the body that just because the gift of the Spirit flows powerful in your life, automatically, it means you know God. No. Didn't the bones of Elisha raise a dead body? I'm sharing with you my contemplations. That there's something wrong with the body. Am I against prosperity? No, never will. Am I against lifting? Am I against influence? No. But we're making a big mistake. Sometimes, you know, and I thank God for the privilege He has given me to inspire a lot of people. I, I, I consider myself to be an inspiration to many people in this nation and around the world. And I thank God for that privilege. I travel for meetings. And every time, as soon as I come out of the car, there's a row of young people overflow. I see the admiration. I see everything. And everybody's watching. They're watching what I'm wearing. They're watching it. They're hoping, will I fall when he passes me? And I just keep nodding my head. I'm saying, these people really do not know who God is. When you know God, ba, it will take grace for you to want to go out of his presence, even for ministry. When you know God, it will take the grace of God for him to tell you, look, son, I know you are, but you go out and do some other things. That's why we are not changing. Ever learning, but we are not changing. You look at people, they've been members of a church for 20 years. No change at all. They pray. They fast. They do a lot of these things. But the truth is there is no transformation whatsoever. Spiritual growth is not determined by how long you have been a Christian. Listen to me. 
let me clear certain things longevity in the christian faith is not equivalent to growth no sir just because you are you gave your life to christ in 1997 and you are celebrating your 11th birthday as we say in the faith does not mean that you have suddenly become mature we we pride ourselves in all of the say well, i remember when i was a baby christian in in 199 because just because you gave your life to christ in year 2000 and now it's 2018 you imagine that a, an eight-year-old uh, baby would have been grown now and then you now imagine that you too you would have grown no sir our churches are full of people who pride themselves they say look all these things you people are doing we gave our life to christ in 1964 and i say that with all honor what happened from 1964 till today you have been the same person in fact you have gone backward more than 20 years backward a man can give his life to christ and in one year with hunger and passion and fire attain more in one year than someone will attain in 30 years it's true overtaking is allowed in the spirit your growth is subject to your passion your hunger and many other things that i'll be showing you but just get the record straight brothers and sisters and those following online that longevity in the christian faith does not automatically translate to growth truth be told if you were doing business with god and you have stayed long there is a lot you have to teach people but just that you have stayed long on its own that you remember the day you came out for an altar call as 20 years ago that does not mean you are mature a lot of baby christians keep saying when i was a baby christian whereas you can see the parameter spiritual growth is not determined by church attendance that you have been attending koinonia for many years that you have been attending church for many years that you attend service four or five times a week as important and profitable as that is that does not translate to spiritual growth there are many church addicts who believe that just because they are addicted to church program doing one thing or the other oh i'm a deacon i'm a deaconess i'm responsible for baptizing people i'm responsible for school of ministry i'm responsible for marriage counseling i'm responsible for building they have activities that commit them around the church for many years and they think because of those activities they are matured so when you say look i remember when we started the building project remember 1991 they nod to mean that oh that time when we were children they, whereas they are still children by god's standard say amen spiritual growth is not determined by church attendance let me surprise you spiritual growth is not even determined just by the religious study of bible I describe it that way so that you don't think i'm against bible study there is a religious study of the bible where men just there are many theological experts who have read the bible the nature of their vocation the nature of their work necessitates that they must read the bible thoroughly and research but they don't know god some of the people who translated this bible did not know god it is part of the reason why they did a lot of things to this bible I'm, I'm, it's not something to discuss now are we together just because you are around a bible study group just because you have been given an opportunity to be preached to, 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 to be preaching around or doing all of these things does not mean you are growing spiritually hallelujah is god speaking to us not determined by any of those things spiritual growth is not even determined by the amount of testimonies you receive 
all of a sudden if i get a testimony sunday monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday chances are that i can deceive myself that because i had seven day stretch it means i've entered a new dimension with god no sir no sir can just be that you are enjoying prophecy someone just spoke over your life and things are happening but that may not be because there are people who say if i am really growing why am i not getting a particular testimony or this testimony or that testimony and those who get the testimonies now intimidate others say well you see you are not getting anything no sir spiritual growth is not measured by ministerial growth it's not necessarily so ministry can be growing but you are not growing members are multiplying but you are not growing branches are multiplying but you are not growing sermons are multiplying but you are not growing books multiplying but you are not growing the level of excellence in the ministry multiplying but you are not growing none of those things in themselves they are only supportive reasons for spiritual growth but not the basis for the measure of spiritual growth is God helping us that's the reason why someone can raise a song and, and raise a, a song that does not carry any value spiritually and the next thing you see people just dancing and sweating and jumping and you are wondering I'm not teaching you to be cynical you see God is a merciful God and I taught you the character of love that love judges intentions more than actions so God can see an ignorant people just dancing around for something that doesn't make sense, like idolatry. And he looks at the sincerity of their heart and still reaches them. But that does not justify what they are doing. Are we together? I'm going to share with you certain indices that will help you know whether you are growing spiritually and will help you know whether the body is growing spiritually. Thank you. Do you know... I live a very busy schedule most of you know that and honestly let me tell you this sometimes I look at my schedules and I wish for the times when nobody knew me I, I thank God it's always a privilege to reach out to people and bless people but sometimes I'm on my way going for a trip and I'm tired I'm going for a ministration and I'm just there wondering my God here we go again lord i do this because i love you but i sit down and i admire those days that i can stroll out in the open and nobody knows me i can go in peace now i hardly can even walk in the day someone can see you and embarrass and say apostle i've been trying to see you the, the queue was long now that i've seen you please just speak a word as if you are not a human being now that looks like fame because i'm giving you a word of caution because this is what some of you are dying to get there is a side effect to greatness listen to what i'm telling you you literally will lose your life if you are not careful you will lose your mind that's why great people you can see that they do a lot of things one day you see a great person go and commit suicide and you are wondering how could someone so wealthy and influential hang himself you almost don't have a life at all we call it a celebrity lifestyle as i just said some of you are happy you are just say oh god give it to me be careful before you pray that prayer please listen to me with your ears and your spirit this thing we call celebrity lifestyle it has a serious side effect to your christian life am i rejecting influence no no i will always balance what i'm teaching but be careful i look forward to the times when i can go and smuggle myself and hide somewhere do you know for me to have time to pray there must be a special arrangement you must shift the phone away you must off television you must off light you must find something to charge your atmosphere I jokingly tell my boys sometimes when I'm going to select the clothes that I, I want to wear I just stand and I look at my clothes and I say you see this is how we sin against God when I didn't have anything I just go and in five minutes you've picked something out but now that God has blessed you which of the hundred shoes will I wear which of the 50 suits will I wear they look little but they are eaters of the quality of your life 
not just spiritually but in every wise they can rob you of the richness the value of life and living listen to what i'm telling you it's true it's true if you came to my house now you saw me eating roasted yam you'll be surprised now as if i don't have a right to do it this is my own life but simply because of the position i occupy ah, ah, apostle roasted yam no it can't be ah, you see that let me tell you this let me tell you this not many people will admit this and tell you this is how people die spiritually because your whole life becomes plastic everything there is there is no realness between you and god again everything are we together you can't lie down and roll before god again no matter what happens to your growth preserve the things that help you know god preserve them don't lose them while you grow don't lose the secret place while you grow don't lose the altar of prayer while you grow if god grants you grace to build a house build an altar for you and god build a garage for your car and leave god outside We must re-examine these truths as far as spiritual growth is concerned because believers listen to me it is important that we grow can i call you can i say come Sheung. let's assume that shown just gave his life to christ now please look up everyone let's assume shown just gave his life to christ tonight and i attach him to dr emeka i say emeka please follow up on this person question does this gentleman really know what to do most people don't know in church they don't know what next they just say well in our church we we have we have discipleship class or we have foundation class or we have baptismal class or whatever they just recommend you when you say follow him say well i have one small prayer group come and join that's that's all i know do you know believers we are so basic in our understanding that's the reason why there is a lot of increase in membership but no maturity we are not matured enough you can't give what you don't have the average christian does not know how to make another christian mature even preachers even preachers you see people hang around your life for a long time they are not growing i've had the privilege of going around men of god who are influential and i've been surprised seeing the people close to them no no transformation at all yet a heavily anointed man one day benihim got angry and fired all the bodyguards he said they are all godless and they are not serious they are just collecting salary benihim is sweating and raising people from wheelchair and those guys are just there they are concerned about the six pack and everything he said get out of this place Till today he does it when he's preaching and sees people start saying leave my presence it gives him memory of godless people hanging around him and not growing that you are close to god does not mean that you are in line with him you can be close to the things around god close to church when they make altar call you are the one who directs people you are the one who does everything and you can think because you are around the things of god I will give you four indices that will measure thank you guys that are measures of your spiritual growth you will know tonight whether you are growing you will know whether your church is growing you will know whether your family is growing spiritually ready number one the first parameter to measure spiritual growth as given by God is your love life your love life write it down your love life first john chapter 4 a long reading 7 to 21 first john chapter 4 from verse 7 to 21 the first parameter to measure your growth in the kingdom is your love life everybody say my love life 
I don't mean love like love. You know what I'm talking about. Love. God and men. Let's read what the Bible says. Beloved, let us love one another. For God is love and everyone that loveth is what? Born of God. And knoweth God. Don't tell me you know God if I cannot see it in your love life. There are many people, we are still reading, there are many people who claim they love God, but there is no love in their life. They don't love God and they don't love people. The more, the deeper and the higher you rise in God, the more it translates to your love for people. The Bible says, He that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is what? So don't tell me you know God just because you are speaking Greek and Hebrew and Latin and Aramaic. No, I look at your love life. You may not have all the charismatism around ministry, but I want to see your love life. Continue please. Nine. In this was manifested the love of God towards us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. It's a long reading. Let's see how far we go. Hearing is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us. He's giving you the character of the kind of love he's talking about now. And sent his son to be a propitiation for our sin. Beloved, if God so loved us, please read on with me we ought also to do what look at the kind of hatred Ejimi, that is in the body of christ among believers i'm not talking of non-christians you look palpable hatred palpable resentment yet we keep writing books we keep saying we keep saying we love we preachers hate ourselves we have trained the members to hate themselves and everybody hates everybody a family of five people they hate themselves. Twelve. No man had seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us. That means I use love to show whether God is around your environment. If you claim you came out of his presence, if you claim you dwell in his presence and I do not see love, the Bible is saying you are lying. Because that God cannot appear, so I will use love. Like you spray a perfume and some of you who are very strong perfumes, when you pass, the perfumes can, it can show that you were around this vicinity or you are around. That's it. God says that love is like the aura that flows the epitome of his presence is love, not power. Love, not power. The Bible never said if you see power, just know God is there. It says that no man had seen God at any time. If we love one another, then God dwelleth in us. And his love is perfected. Perfected. Full. Hereby know we that we dwell in him. And he in us because he had given us of his spirit. We are reading to 21. It's a long reading. And we have seen and do testify that the father sent the son to be the savior of the world. 15. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is son of God and all of that. Next verse. It says, and we have known and believed the love that God had sent to us. God is love. He says it again. And he that dwelleth in love dwell in God and God in him so Joshua Selman you claim you are spiritually matured don't just show me by the miracles don't just show me by the wheelchairs and crutches alone in the order of priority let me see your love life not your prayer life your love life many tongue talkers don't have any love in that praying in tongues there is even flesh in it very powerful song i'm coming back to that song hearing is our love made perfect that we may have the boldness in the day of judgment because as he is so are we in this world 18 we're reading to 21 there is no fear in love ah look at this there is no fear it's not saying reverence fear fear 
but perfect love casted out fear because fear has what if my life torments you you are, and you are not a demon spirit something is wrong with me because my life should encourage you should challenge you but not torment you there are people whose lives are a torment to others there are pastors whose lives are a torment to others there's no love there perfect love cast out fear because fear keeps people in a place of torment there are people in church who cannot do wrong things and come to a man of god and say look i'm so sorry i was in your house the other day and you noticed the bomb vita went halfway let me just tell you the truth it was me because they already know say you okay i'm coming let me just finish my prayer just wait for me and the guy prays for hours you are hearing him he comes out sweating and says sit down what did you even say and starts talking as though he was acting he was acting there because fear hath torment he says we love him because he first loved us two more verses if a man say joshua selman if a ministry says if a christian organization say i love god and what talk to me he did his brother he said he is a did i say it all scripture was inspired all scripture that if joshua selman claims i come here and brag around and say the power of god is moving and i do not love a jimmy i do not love pastor alpha the bible says i am a liar and it tells you the reason why you are a liar so be patient he's explaining for he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen he says how can he love god whom he had not seen You have somebody that claims you are of the same family and you hate the person then you turn to god and say lord i love you you are my lord you are my rose of sharon lily of the valley john says you are a liar while praying liar while fasting dry liar while praying in tongues liar while on that crusade ground liar And this commandment have we from him that he who loveth God loveth him. have you ever been told that is a command it's not just a choice to love is a command the level and the extent of hatred that is in church is scary from we pastors men of god leaders we train people to hate people let me show you growth we can look at koinonia today and know our level of spiritual growth as a ministry not just by the power that flows our love life our love life everybody say my love life i see your growth by how much you love people I see your growth by how much you care about people. You just hear that, ah, somebody lost something. It's good for him. He doesn't listen. No, 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 no. You are here. Okay, what happened? How can we help? Love. I'm deep in love with you, Lord. Very powerful song. I'm deep in love with you, Abba Father. I'm deep in love with you, Lord. That's my confession tonight. That I'm deep in love with you, precious Jesus. I'm deep in love with you, Lord. Listen, let me tell you this. One of the reasons why many people cannot flow in the anointing is because there is no love love is like a cleaner that cleans the valve where the power of god flows there are people who the power of god can barely flow in their life they pray like fire but their hatred has clogged the passage for the power of god to flow in one of my greatest desire is even the meaning of my name the way to love i pray all the time that god will keep my love life for people not just him i can lie and pretend that i love him but let it be shown by how I love people. Who is smiling because you are alive? 
not just love i love you is not the show of love is one of the ways he said how many of you will see a brother listen carefully james was teaching us faith and works you are seeing somebody crying hungry and say oh i bid you god speed he said no believers are not caring this is where the orthodox assemblies i doff my heart a thousand times for them pentecostal people because we believe in life when a member loses a child everybody just goes we don't want to be associated with that pain we are life givers hallelujah is that true and we leave the people to cry and we leave the people to go through all kinds of pain but when there is celebration oh glory to god we are happy everybody comes around this is my son this is my daughter this ceo this businessman who was promoted i remember the night vigil when i prophesied to him because we like being associated with things that massage our ego jesus wept at funerals he was not too busy he was touched with the feelings of people's infirmity when he saw the woman who had five husbands and the six was not her own i know what joshua selma would have done madam and you have not come for koinonia what a stupid lawless woman but watch jesus the jesus we are trying to become I, I we must make sure is this jesus we are trying to become jesus goes to sit at a well and begins to converse is she so important i mean jesus you would miss crusades to talk with this supposed woman he that dwells in love dwells in god we have given satan room to perpetuate hatred among us i'll not be surprised if there are people seated here in this place tonight that don't even see eyeball to eyeball they just hear the sound of one another good evening hey, how are you and everybody just goes no spiritual growth i'm deep in love with you Abba Father, I'm deep in love with you, Lord. We're deep in love with you, precious Jesus. We're deep in love with you, Lord. Hallelujah. The first your love life the way you love people there is nothing more beautiful than seeing a human being who has value for life that's why all these wicked dictators are going to hell if they don't repent i guarantee you they don't need any vision of anybody saying i saw them in hell that's where they are going to if if your life dehumanizes another human being you are going to hell i'm telling you this you men are god's highest creation your life should never intentionally listen to me your life should never intentionally be the basis for the destruction of another no no there are some of us we claim we love god we claim we are prayer warriors we claim we are war giants we are ministers apostle joshua selman but people can never rise because of us someone comes to see you and goes back heartbroken and torn into pieces why are we like that just because the person did not achieve a task well are you this stupid you mean it you are doing it you don't know who is talking to you and then we feel say sorry brother bless you how are you <laughs> somebody just annoyed me you are you are such an you are such an idiot you are a stupid person huh okay bless you bless you who are, who are you lying to? Don't laugh. Oh, I'm serious this night. Hmm. Look at some of our parents on the way to church. On the way to church. Who are the stupid people inside this car? They didn't wash this car and they're on their way going. That's the man of God. He's going to conduct the service. As soon as he drives. Um, where is my Bible? <gasps> He's talking to his wife now. I forgot. Honey, I thought you were car. Don't honey me. You are a stupid woman. I always knew I made a mistake. After 17 years, you are still as stupid as you are. And then somebody just knocked and say, Ah, man of God, can I? Ah, bless you. Bless you, brother. No. The Bible said, Let that man know that he's a liar. Let that, let that anointed man know he's a liar. Even with the anointing, he's still a liar. 
love must be genuine that doesn't mean people are not human beings don't just see anybody just pressing on you for something naughty and wrong you did and just say you see what apostle is saying no. there are lousy people that deserve deserve to be addressed in a way and manner it's still love yes still love love doesn't just I'm, I'm saying this especially for we young people because we we like being allowed to do anything we want to do whether it's good or bad no he that loves you will chastise you chastise you can you say your love life is worthy of emulation can you say whilst you are seated listening to me whilst you're outside those following online can you say your love life as you're seated right now is worthy of emulation do you seek the good in everybody there are people who are is their whole life is is like it's like they rejoice over the pain of others when they see somebody laughing they say well why, why are you laughing what's the laugh for well i'm just i'm just that's the glory of god so what is there to laugh am i looking like a clown how can your life be so sad like that love love i love people i love the workers in this ministry i love you with all my heart every one of you ask god he will tell you yes yes let me see your love by how much you lay down your life for your sheep let me see your love by how much you can sacrifice not how much you use people do you know there are times people sow seeds for me here and i look at the people sowing the seed and i look at the kind of seed they are sowing i feel so guilty so guilty i'm fighting with myself some of you as soon as that seed is coming say hey, why did you put it in an envelope how much is it okay seven is it nine or seven thousand say it's nine thousand sir say thank you father bless the person then you know that the, the person's need is not even your concern just to receive i really love people with all my heart it's one of the secrets of my work with god i don't just love god i love people and i'm careful to use that word because it's true you must love people as a father do you love your wife do you love your children are you compassionate many of us don't have compassion this thing called compassion the ability to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity weakness limitation say me i'm not an emotional person no it's not about crying you must not cry to show you are i'm not i'm not an emotional person in terms of cry but anybody the more you know god the the fortitude to forbear with people to understand with people must be there I remember one time someone just knocked my gate bang 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 and then i came i opened the door and i saw a woman standing wearing hijab and you know she was just asking for this i want I, I i actually was sad because of the way she was knocking you know and then i looked and and i just saw tears that's it i just said no 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 what is what is wrong now and i brought out some money just put something and gave her and she went away you know sometimes children will just gather themselves like this and come and knock the gate and stand as if as if i ask them to come now when i see those children truly speaking i know what they are doing is wrong but how will you start beating the, you see the way the hunger ravaged faces i have to just find something and give them because if i give them money i know they'll go and collect it so you give them something they can eat there and then do you have compassion some of us i don't mean to insult you i'm sorry if i do but you are wicked yes you are wicked it's not it's not it's not an insult it's a description it's a state of your heart you can watch people in pain and act as if it's, it's not my concern no you can see hungry people and come with one thousand naira change it buy food there eat the bones take minerals squeeze the leather throw it and say i'm going for koinonia see we'll see now no you are not tender-hearted your heart is hard like iron the bible speaks about those people that he will replace a heart of stone say a heart of stone say it say it a heart of stone with a heart of flesh a heart of stone some of us our hearts are like stone someone calls you and says look something is not working well in my life 
and just leave. So how is that my business? Sorry, sir. They just threw me out of my house. I, I, I just felt like sharing it with somebody. Even if you don't have house rent to give them, can't you pray with them? Please, let's be careful the way we treat people. It is a proof of spiritual growth. Love. Love. Sometimes I'm tired in the night, very tired. I just try to stroll. I'm strolling and I'm just seeing a missed call. I can check sometimes 32 missed calls, one line. And I just pick the call. Hello, who are you? And you hear the person saying something silly. Is this Apostle Joshua Selman? He said, man of God, I have, I'm privileged. You are calling me by two. What's the issue? Sir, I have many things. I don't even know where I will start from. This guy, 32 missed calls. You would think someone is sick in the hospital. But that guy just got up, sleep, didn't come. You see, so um, I, 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 I agree that men can be annoying. Let's, let's be very honest here. Men can be very annoying, except you are not a leader. Human beings, they can be annoying with their ingratitude. They can be annoying with their sarcasm. They can be anno annoying with their, 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 their sense of cynicism and disrespect and dishonor yet the bible says that you love everybody say i choose to love say it again i choose to love say i choose to love i want you to stand up walk around to 10 people and just hug them and tell them i choose to love you for the sake of jesus christ some of you it's not for the sake of your bad behavior for the sake of jesus christ i choose to love i let go I choose to love. I choose to love. I choose to love. It's a decision that I've made. No matter how annoying you are, I choose to love. No matter how inconsiderate you act, I choose to love. It's a choice. I choose to love hallelujah God bless you please be seated God bless you please be seated let's settle down the second index to measure your growth is the manifestation of character character galatians chapter 5 let's look at the fruit of the spirit many of us don't have it you have the holy spirit but you don't have the fruit of the spirit galatians chapter 5 22 galatians 5 22 but it doesn't matter what what perspective you look at it from we're looking at all nine of them the fruit of the spirit is love Look at me now this thing we call the fruit of the spirit is the summation of what we call character character has nothing to do with personality i'm quiet i'm loud mm -mm. if the fruit the fruit of the spirit describes the habitation the atmosphere that produces character love joy joy brothers and sisters joy is not happiness if you don't have joy you don't have character every time we talk of character many of us just look and excuse ourselves in pride i'm not smoking i'm not looking for any man's wife so you think because of that you have character no sir joy 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 rejoice in the lord and let me tell you i know your joy when you are under pressure pressure is where joy is demonstrated if you are spiritual you just had that your phone that you bought 120,000 somebody just stepped on it and you are saying I'm going to kill this person I think well sorry we are human beings don't you make mistakes you too you are annoyed but joy everybody say joy joy you are there is that state of merriment in your heart for no reason they just tell you look um your mother's is um, health issue is getting complicated and you just say in the name of Jesus I'm happy joy 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 is in my heart 
some of the saddest people in the world are believers that claim they have the holy spirit watch them as they drive around the road watch them as they talk there's no joy you see unbelievers sometimes they even hear bad news and they just laugh it over and go and take beer and maybe smoke or go around and that's the end of it they sleep under the bridge by morning they get up and that's it but a believer joyless life and you find out that you can't receive anything the bible says he that sows in tears he will reap in joy it didn't say he will reap with joy he will reap in joy the atmosphere that will bring his receiving harvest is joy if there is no joy the harvest does not arrive you sow in tears not with tears but you reap in joy joy is what calls harvests I know your spiritual life by how you rejoice even in the midst of pain you go to the board three carryovers God you disappointed me give me back the 10,000 that I sold in Koinonia I gave project 10,000 I tied all of this the joy of the Lord is that's what you see. you come and you see your car They've removed something. You kept the car in the market to quickly go and buy something. And all these touts remove all kinds of things. They've removed one part of the light. It can be annoying. And you stand there. And the devil is trying to tempt you. And you, no. Satan, you will not see my tears. I choose to rejoice. A brother just walks up to you and says, look, I'm just announcing to you although we have done the traditionals something came up i will marry you again now don't lie that you'll be laughing so let's be human there's going to be pain but but this is where spirituality comes in listen this is where spirituality comes in you know that a man can receive nothing except it is given so lord i give you thanks and you just begin to say lord i thank you I give you all the praise I give you all the thanks and tears coming out of your eyes you don't hide it say Lord I thank you I thank you <laughs> ah brothers and sisters I show you a matured Christian as one who produces joy in his life regardless of circumstances regardless regardless if I'm here right now and they tell me my house is burning let me tell the truth I won't be happy but to say maybe I won't be able to sleep this night me Joshua Selman no 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 way ah, Lord I give you praise thank you thank you that this house burnt and I did not die inside I give you thanks it would have been worse it is the mind that brought everything is still alive so I'm alive I've not really lost anything In this troubled world some of us don't have peace it's not just the word shalom are we together this peace you see is a revelation of the ability of God to be in control control my God is in control I need not fear what can man do to me I need not fear a great man in this country was kidnapped by assassins when they caught him they were about to kill him and they said look this and they looked at him he was restful very very restful and they looked at him they didn't know what to do with him he wasn't begging well okay 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 go to the back of my wardrobe that's where the money is if it's the dollars check the other side mm -hmm. the guy was there restfulness we live in a troubled world you must have peace to survive most people don't have peace that's what causes high blood pressure there's no peace so they worry they worry about everything who will marry me i hope i will have a child though i hope i will have a house lord where will i settle will i be in zaria or this you are about to write jam yet you are asking god lord when i finish university who will be my wife what kind of worry is that he makes me lie down in quiet waters i receive grace to walk in peace you must receive it 
grace to walk in peace you are full of the peace of god people just come and say look hey the whole world is getting i mean the sun is going to hit the moon one object we don't know one ufo will soon hit the earth next week mm, i'm in peace great peace have them that trust him in nothing shall they be terrified great peace great peace everybody say i have peace say it i have peace say i refuse to worry prophesy to yourself i refuse to worry this this is the measure of maturity this is where the our orthodox circles beat us supposed pentecostal people hands down you will see a woman who had a car accident four of her children right there on the floor one no head one no hand and you see her singing a song crying but singing a song you try to stop i say no you people should not cry my children are in heaven this is the person who should be crying comforting you great peace our emotional world that does not trust god we are perturbed at everything i will give you a job tomorrow hey lord i thank you i call you by 1 a.m something came up that job is not oh god why are you doing this to me now stability restfulness my god is alive is god teaching us something tonight long suffering another word there is patience in our world of fast food quick tea fast uh, uh, what they call it indomie ready-made food there are other foods that just drop it put water and up you go we are in a rush we don't have patience it's led people into all kinds of things we are impatient do you know there are people if only they were patient for one more day they would see the salvation of the lord in their lives you've been traveling just when your miracle is about to come impatience cheats you do you know let me tell you how to know your miracle is coming the flesh begins to become so uncomfortable it starts offering alternatives the moment this starts you were praying non-stop for two weeks just three more days it looks like you are praying for one year it's a sign that result is coming the devil is trying to touch whatever he can touch so you don't have the staying power to remain and receive that i choose to be patient there are men of god who is impatience that drove them to go and collect power from sorcerers the power is not working now they have not experienced increase impatience some of our parents are in huge debt today because impatience did not allow there are young people today just be patient for one year and you'll know i must marry by latest by june they go and borrow 1.2 million at at a 30 percent interest rate per month and they don't think well they just go and borrow it and satan satan you will use that money or health not even the marriage that's satan for you impatience has cheated our world of young people someone sent me a text i should pray that he must go to is this cyprus or where that he believes in the word of god upon my mouth that his mother is the one sponsoring him i replied him back i said young man your mother cannot afford your fees why must you go to cyprus he's already studying nigeria he wants to leave it not that something is wrong this supposed let it be that me too i read abroad that gentleman now will allow the devil use him to yoke his poor mother to send him to Cyprus or send him wherever it is that he was going. I didn't pray for him. Gentleness. Gentleness. The character that typifies this is the dove. Many of us were not gentle we miss out on everything because we don't have gentleness many of us are introverted so we think we are gentle you are not don't confuse your personality with the fruit of the spirit this is the fruit of the recreated human spirit in touch with the holy ghost that you are a quiet person there are people who they just look depressed it doesn't mean they are gentle they can be wicked and wild it's just that they are slow to doing it doesn't mean they won't do it gentleness the way you eat 
the way you act you knock on someone's door you are not you are not you are, your presence is not inviting you are your approach to life is harsh very wild goodness goodness benevolence goodness not just kindness goodness a measure of your giving not just money the ease at which you release things to improve people's lives goodness not just giving faith or faithfulness let's go to the next one 23 meekness meekness is, is, is similar to humility meekness esteeming people better than yourself or at least not degrading people to rise temperance self-control 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 knowing when to speak and when to keep quiet knowing when to keep quiet even when you have what to say the bible says if a man err not in words that man is a perfect man perfection is not measured just by what you do but the ability to keep quiet do you know the level of spiritual maturity it takes to be silent when you have something to say a man is counseling you and is making blunders he's quoting wrong scriptures and you are very sound in the word yet you keep quiet oh yes daddy oh yes ah yes daddy and the man is quoting one scripture that doesn't make sense and saying something that is it's a total waste of time honestly but you have the fortitude yes daddy at the end of it he releases a blessing every other thing was false except that blessing that one you can be sure you got it but someone hey, daddy sorry just to correct you <laughs> that verse is is, is 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 old testament ah daddy you are getting old your memory and you you talk and you you are saying something that is so pungent and offensive and you say it's, it's how i am i'm very expressive character let me give you a few other scriptures we may not consider them for time's sake very quickly write this down romans chapter 5 from verse 3 to 5 let's look at that one at least romans 5 3 to 5 then i'll give you two others second peter chapter 1 verse 5 to 7 please write it down second peter chapter 1 verse 5 to 7 and then colossians chapter 3 from verse 12 to 15 colossians chapter 3 from verse 12 to 15 let's look at romans chapter 3 chapter 5 from verse 3 it says and not only so but we glory in tribulations knowing that tribulations worketh patience and patience experience and experience hope five and hope make it not ashamed because the love of god is shed abroad in our hearts by the holy ghost he was talking about people sustaining the same power in times of tribulation can you go through difficult times and still give god the glory do you sustain the fortitude to not curse god like job's wife suggested he do and job said no 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 though he slay me yet will i trust him say amen number three the third index for measuring growth for a believer for a church for an assembly is god blessing you tonight is understanding 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 your love life character understanding hebrews chapter 5 please give us from verse 11 to 13 quickly hebrews chapter 5 from verse 11 to 13 it says of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered seeing ye are dull of hearing go ahead for when for the time ye ought to be teachers ye have need that one teach you again which be the first principles of the oracles of god and are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat this this guy is saying by now based on my investment in your life you should have attained a level where you should be teachers but you are still there struggling with the foundational things of the kingdom barren of understanding it says for everyone that used milk is unskillful unskillful in the word of righteousness for he is a babe 
no matter how long he has been in church no matter how old he is in age first corinthians chapter 4 and verse 20 first corinthians chapter 4 and verse 20 then we look at chapter 13 verse 11 quickly please first corinthians chapter 14 i meant to say 14 14 and verse 20 first corinthians 14 and verse 20 let's read together it's projected one to read brethren be not children in understanding how be it in malice be ye children but in understanding be men hmm. this is apostle paul for you this guy was really a man he said when it comes to malice and all these other foolish things and nonsense be children be children but when it comes to the issues of understanding the kingdom be men be matured grow there's too much childishness in the body of christ there are truths in the kingdom we must know your identity in christ is the foundation for your growth who are you in christ this is not just a denomination's perspective it is the order of growth because if you do not know who you are and who you are in christ like the book of ephesians opens us up to every other thing will not work well i know my positional advantage in christ my oneness with him that understanding is enshrined in my mind forever regardless of what i do i do from the standpoint of that understanding and then other ordinances of the spirit the bible talks of the doctrines of baptisms the bible talks of other things foundational things that must be in place the ministry of prayer at a level in the spirit you should not be taught the basics of prayer again that if somebody is oppressed they say have you prayed say no say pray now and say okay didn't you know after how many years in church must you be told to tight all this coercing that pastors coerce people no time for the word you have to coerce people god has something to say you are, you are getting their attention listen listen and then the, the song is really working for them because they would not have listened what sort of a membership is that are we together you should have grown to the level where you have seen the value of the word of god do you know i'm surprised when i see people gisting and talking around when the word is coming it's satanic it's an attack because when the word comes it is sent the preacher may be preaching it but god is sending it the one thing satan supervises himself is the word the bad soil immediately satan not a demon he came and took the seed by himself everybody say understanding first corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11 paul again is teaching us you are not growing spiritually when your understanding is not measuring up with your supposed growth he says when i was a child i speak as a child so i can know you are a child through your communication i understood as a child you can look at one of these our little ones and promise them aeroplane and first thing in the morning they come to you with confidence believing you actually will get them aeroplane that's that's how many of us understand spiritual things the devil will tell us every kind of nonsense and we still believe it although you know he can't do it and you still believe it that's that's understanding as a child i thought as a child but when i became a man i put away including childish understanding What is your understanding like what do you know about god today there are some things the devil will never try to bring to my life with all humility i have gained understanding more than that there is no message on earth that will make me stop tithing there is, no 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 it's a persuasion this is not a denomination's perspective i adopted it's a revelation that has become spirit and life hmm. you see that there is there is no amount of revelation that will make my tomorrow less than my today no i've caught the keys it's been given to me hmm. koinonia will never never go down let me tell you it's, it's not pride there is an understanding that sponsors that position 
what do you understand today that gives you stability if i get a text now and someone says apostle just to let you know that tomorrow by this time you're a dead man what do i know that gives me confidence <laughs> I went to minister somewhere we're going to pray shortly i went to minister somewhere and a man who god gave them a miracle of a child there was a herbalist did you mean the herbalist made i don't know i can't get the full import of the story but there was some incantation and the herbalist vowed that nobody can break that whatever jinx and the rest and all of a sudden i was i was in that church and i prophesied to them that they were going to have their child now when i went back to me now and they, they showed me the child the child was there and the herbalist was dead i didn't kill the herbalist a mystery killed him a proud man who was taught by another ignorant man concocts a charm and claims there is no man remember people have made those kinds of stupid statements in the bible shall these things be that even if god will open the windows of heaven ah god said me you bring me into the equation and act as if I'm, I'm one of your your rulers you will see it but you will eat of it they stamped that guy to death at the gate of where the breakthrough was our stability in the kingdom is through our understanding i can give everything i have today and go to bed in peace because i know how it came i know how it comes i know how it will always come we can go and start koinonia anywhere that God grants us grace and this same result you see will be reproduced verbatim. It's based on understanding. It's not luck. What do you understand about God? What do you understand about finances? What do you understand about marriage? What do you understand about the voice of God? What do you understand about the anointing? What do you understand about redemption? Don't just tell me I know. Mm -mm. It matters. Who trained your understanding? There's something that you have been taught that makes Satan such a big deal to you that your entire life revolves around just being careful and awareness of his presence. There are things I understood about Satan that gave me rest in my life. It is true. You can't be doing what I'm doing if all you have is anointing. The devil will destroy you. He will destroy you, I assure you. Hallelujah. If I'm sitting outside taking a fresh air and my eyes is open and I see a demon spirit pass, I'm not going to say anything. He didn't talk to me. Just, just go wherever you are. Toe and fro. Up you go. I pity the spirit for seeing me because he won't be the same. I don't have to pray. You see that? already that mission is failed for sure at least for that day at least in my presence now the light shines in darkness it didn't say it shines in the night it shines in darkness darkness is not a state it's a person the light shines in darkness the prince of darkness you cannot see the light and act like you didn't see it no. i can never pray for you and your life remains the same it's not true either the devil will attack you from that prayer or breakthrough will come you will never be the same that prayer will do something it may increase the attack in your life because the devil is agitated that you came or it can bring breakthrough or something just know that you will not be the same it's impossible i believe this i have been saying this thing for many years if i were lying about it you would see it by now brothers and sisters i have been raised up with christ truly i believe this it is not kenneth higgins ideology it is not ew kenyon's ideology it is the truth from scripture far above bishop oyedeko will call it a far above mentality i really am above above occultic powers only god knows how many of them have my names now they will call on my name like baal from morning till night till every year and nothing will happen what do you believe about god 
what do you believe about yourself i believe i will never be poor it's not the issue of okay i like money or i don't like money i can't undo it the process has been ignited it can never be undone understanding i will have to undo everything i know is too late this i believe koinonia will never go down no it's not the issue of let's pray that it was let me tell you the truth brothers and sisters i don't mean to be arrogant believe me there is a finger holding this ministry it's not standing upon space there is a hand he upholds all things by the word of his power the right hand of god able to hold men and keep them standing when all is said and done to him be the glory standing What do you understand about your job? What do you understand about favor? What do you understand about prayer? Is God helping us? These are the things that make us spiritual. When I'm invited for a meeting, what do I understand about myself, about God, about the anointing that will bless the people? If you invite me for a meeting, what do, what do I understand? Do I know that I am a blessing? if you know you are a blessing you are not going to meet any church member and tell him look i'm prophesying to you so twenty thousand naira to my life anybody that does that is not a wise man of god it's because you do not understand god let him that glory at glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me i can't claim i know everything about this god but brothers and sisters there are some things i know the more you know god the more you know yourself the only way to know yourself is in knowing him because you are a reflection of him here's what the bible has to say the bible says in second corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18 second corinthians 3 and verse 18 it says but we all with open face listen beholding us in a glass not beholding ourselves beholding the glory then we are changed like the animals of jacob and laban kept looking at something and the children they gave birth to were after the order of what they were looking at the bible says as we behold him all i see in my life is the glory of god all i see in my life is the glory of god truly speaking this is not just some nonsense confession all i see in my life i am an expression of the glory of god all i see in my life i have made my eyes single like a flint to see the glory of god i see his faithfulness whatever does not work out the way i want god is up to something lord i see your glory i see the glory of god in koinonia don't allow satan alter your perception and see the world as negative and see everything as if the whole world is coming to end the whole world will not end by a crisis god will end the world he started it's not all this nonsense that people move around and say one one thing is coming to hit the earth it's not today before you were born it's been going around the earth there is the keeper of the earth the earth is the lord's the landlord can lock his door and say it's over it's time everybody say understanding number four the last index to measure your spiritual growth is the outworkings of the power of God in and through your life the outworkings listen it has to be in this order your love life character 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 understanding gain understanding understand the systems of the kingdom don't is it's a risk to just walk around like that and then finally the outworkings of god don't tell me you are growing and then your body cannot become a host for the glory and the power and the grace of god no the bible says to grow in grace and to also grow in the knowledge of god i must be growing in the anointing you should be able to look at my life and know that last year this was the dimension in the spirit dimension in power and anointing and authority today this is the dimension i have seen people who have not backslidden but they've not grown either they have pegged themselves at a level the grace for performance is not in their lives talkatives talking all kinds of things the semblance of power but there's nothing to demonstrate the reality of the kingdom 
He said, the kingdom of God is not in meat and drink, but in righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And then he says, for the kingdom of God is not in words, but in power, the demonstration of power. I should be able to see the power of God working in your life. That a sister should be able to say, look, um, I've been in Koinonia two years. What's the challenge? Let's agree. Father, in the name of Jesus, we release your power over this situation. And two days later, this gentleman calls and says, Sister, I don't know you, but my goodness, you are powerful. You said something. You made an utterance. And the realm of the spirit responded. Let me tell you, when the realm of the spirit hears you, you are powerful. It's true. You are powerful many powerless believers prayer is not just power automatically prayer connects you to god it is god that gives power prayer does not give power people move around deceiving themselves that just because they are praying power is coming automatically no sir a prayerless christian is a powerless christian because a prayerless christian has no contact with god and so there is no um release of power it is not prayer that gives power prayer is like a rope it connects you and god it is you god is the giver of power many people keep depending on prayer to give power that's why they pray forever and never get power there is no place in scripture where prayer should give you power it is your connection with god prayer connects you to god the same way faith too faith in itself does not give you result the assignment of faith is to connect you to the anointing it is the anointing that is the system of performance in the kingdom because we don't know these things we keep confusing the things around i believe in the power of god my life is built on it i'm unapologetic about the power of god when i talk of power i'm not talking of falling down when i'm talking of power i'm talking of results results that can be reproduced that i can bless you i can program a climate of possibility upon your life there is an agency in the spirit that grants men access to do that do you have it in your life i know you have been falling down every week but do you have it can you say the power of god is working in your life we need power in this life not just for warfare a validation of the hand of god upon your life there are men of god who are powerless they just say i'm not called into all these things i'm a slow quiet person it's a lie there's no gift of there's no ministry like that it's a lie everybody is called to be a demonstrator of the reality of god let me see the power in your life there is the power to get wealth where is it if wealth is not in your hands then the power is not there or it's not being used there is the power that brings influence there is the power that compels demons and principalities to be subject there is the power that heals the sick you don't heal the sick by desire it takes power to heal them virtue virtue went out of jesus not the apostles not the disciples changes are created by the presence of the power and the anointing of the spirit you are a blessing when you are powerful you are a blessing when you are anointed believers hear me if we truly grow in the spirit we should be powerful but look that blend of love and power on that that reminds me of the lion and the lamb dimension the lion is powerful courageous with an attitude and then the lamb sacrificial full of love you can't just be powerful alone and not have love now love should come above power character should come above power understanding should come above power if you have power without understanding it will not last and it will be misused it is understanding that coordinates the delivery the dispensing of power so that it will be it will be dispensed in accordance to god's principles i can have the gift of visions and not have understanding of the word and i can abuse that gift and destroy people power no understanding as we pray tonight i want to ask you a very serious question are these parameters working in your life can we honestly say as a family of believers that this is our experience can we say that our love life for one another and for men 
is ever increasing can we say we are growing in character as a corporate body are we kind are we loving can we forbear have we learned to tame our words have we learned to minister life to people or are we still priding ourselves with greek and hebrew words moving around and saying oh i gave a revelation somewhere i gave a hebrew word oh it's mimshak is is exousia is anakazo is this and, and we move and and nod around thinking we are growing we make a fool out of ourselves though i speak with tongues of men and of angels and i have not love he says i am nothing that even though i offer my body to be burned Though I have understanding of all mysteries and I have not love, I have nothing. I want to live my life and live my days having these four things in ever increasing measure in my life. That 10 years from now, you will be able to look at me and say, this guy loves God and loves people more. Not that this guy has built several ministries. He's become a global voice. Uh -uh. And Enoch walked with God and he was not. Not that he built churches. Not an Enoch wore suit. He was a suit of one million. An Enoch walked with God. And then character. 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 The manifestation of the fruit of the spirit. That somebody can insult you and say, Pastor Alpha, just to let you know you are the most stupid man of God I've met. And you can read the text and say, well, it's just his opinion. The Lord bless you. And not be under pressure to reply him back. And say i curse you now jesus for you ha! what manner of man jesus inspires me he truly is a mentor he's not just he's not just a father he's not just god when jesus mentors your life your life becomes a wonder you will sit in the middle of all kinds of things and just watch life like this apostle i'm suspecting you're a herbalist that's all right this is your it's your opinion where did you get your power from i've been suspecting you no problem you can suspect that's that's all right a life of peace character you can see somebody that offended you come pastor and he comes to meet you and like Esau and jacob you are the first to hug him ah. and you can stand and say i love you with all my heart how is your ministry doing how is everything doing not that you see somebody going down and say, <laughs> he insulted me the other day. You will know that this, this, this head has. Some of those things we watch people do, be careful. It's not proof of maturity. It's proof of foolishness. It's a sign that there is no growth. For God so loved the world, you must also love men. The more you become like him, the more you love men. I love people. You don't know how happy I am after the grace when our little children all run here and come and jump on me. Some of you are trying to clean my suit. What is the suit? Let them jump. They are teaching me something. The day these children become afraid of you, you should go for a retreat. Because it's a sign that there is a presence you are carrying that is pungent. They don't have the kind of understanding that should ordinarily create fear. Something about your countenance, which is a product of something in your head, is translating to the fear of those kids. This is how to live a useful life. Next time you say you are growing spiritually, don't say it because they are inviting you for meetings. No. Don't say it just because you bought a new car. Wonderful as it is, you must take it in this order. When you go back home now, for you and for your loved ones, take that test. On a scale of 1 to 10, what is my love life? It's easy to lie that you love God. But my neighbor, my friends, my people, my roommate my nasty unbelieving roommate my fellow person in the department here as a worker do i love to see the good in others or do i rejoice when i destroy others where i'm tearing other people down do i derive fulfillment from it then you must go to god and then character can i say i'm a man of character can I say I'm a woman of character? Can I say I'm a man of character? Anointing takes you up, character keeps you there. 
there are people who don't have character that's why they went they will go to a man's church and tear down the people look for all the wealthy people seated in front in the church and organize a special meeting and ask them for money and ask them for whatever it is prophecy and you give money no character it's because a man of god does not have character that you go and bring another pastor to come and raise money for him and you are manipulating people and they are giving their all not willingly you will know they will not be blessed and the man is there when they finish they will now share it and pray over the money and lie that let it be used for the advancement of your kingdom number three understanding and number four the outworkings of the power of god if this is working in your life these four things and in ever increasing measure then please give yourself rest you are growing it doesn't matter which prophet comes to meet you and say jimmy i saw something two weeks ago you are not growing please tear that paper and throw it away and say thank you jesus i'm growing in love i'm growing in character because you have to be careful there are all kinds of people who will come to you day and night manipulating your understanding about spiritual things do you know how many visions and dreams i've gotten in my life all kinds of things there was a time i was sawing in the spirit so powerfully and then came this five or six useless page text message by whoever i can't remember i think we're organizing all kinds of things i said i should be careful what i am teaching something about what i'm teaching i just deleted it i said go away please it's when you don't know god that i'm not saying you should be cynical there are times that god can use people to caution you but not that people just carry their ignorance crying for relevance and come and confuse your consistency with god and you go back feeling bad you are loving god someone just says i have a dream oh and in that dream i saw you you were standing like a madman by the roadside and you are believing that nonsense i reject it madman doing what by which roadside i am hidden in christ and christ in god it may not be so for all of us but that's what i believe sometimes you may be the one who even had that dream yourself and you got up and say me naked in my secondary school I'm wearing pajamas, shirt, no trouser, and I'm sitting in my secondary school. It's a revelation of an attack in your life. So what do you do as a believer? Enforce your victory. Don't complain. Don't send the text to head of department prayer, uh, Jimmy. And do you know, it's amazing how people, they, the same thing they tell you, they tell him, they tell every man of God, just anybody they know. And they say, at least I know that up to 10 people are praying for me, then they go to bed. Laziness. You get up and say in the name of Jesus, the spirit that wants to cause delay. You saw yourself in an old building, your former house, Satan, you are a liar. The Bible says the part of the just, not I want to move forward. That's not prayer. It is written. That's the basis of your prayer. The spirit that keeps me down, I take authority over you. I am risen with Christ. I decree and declare that no weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. I have been called out of every tribe and tongue. This is the believer walking your salvation with fear and trembling. There is no level you get to that you stop doing this thing I'm saying. You are too big to do it, you will be too big to rise. Are we together now? People send me text messages, Apostle, I saw you having a plane crash. I just sit down in the name of Jesus, not me. No way. Uh, mm -mm. The plane was made of metals. The metals were in the earth. I was given dominion over the earth. He didn't say I'm giving dominion when I'm walking on land. I was given dominion. I don't just say I will arrive safely. That's not enough for me. I need to know the basis of arriving safely. Except that plane was made of smoke. If it was made of metals and I am above it, he that cometh from above is above all. If it will crash, I will not enter it. But if I enter it, is God that is in charge of that plane. It's not a generic belief. It's mine. It's my understanding. I don't believe there is any mortal man born of a woman on earth that can kill me. I don't believe I will eat poison and die. I don't believe it. It's only in heaven that will tell how many times I've eaten it. I won't die, oh, no. No. 
I will not pray for people carrying communicable diseases. And after 10 years, they now check my system and find, and find out that while I was praying for one, the thing entered me. I better go back and flog it out with God and pray on a handkerchief and say, everybody come and touch it. But if God tells me, lay hands, I must find out. There has to be something in my life. God is a God of speed. But until he speaks, you are on your own. It's amazing how you can be running for many years and find out that you are not moving running but not moving and here comes a man as weak as he is but he can walk at the pace of god and more can be achieved in one month with god than 10 years alone have you not learned the excellency of walking with god he said for with god all things without god outside of god there are things that are not possible apostle my life i don't want to be a failure age is already um, not on my side i must make sure that i build a house now i must and god is saying calm down son you have handed your life over to me let me be lord of your life i say lord you don't know the pressure that is coming from my family let's be careful satan comes to attack us at the points of our vulnerability and hijacks us don't miss the series on friday we are rounding up the deliverance series are we together god is already speaking that's what leads many of us to this life of hustling putting your hand in everything and just rushing around and they say why well, say man must work all those nonsense cliches must get out of your life and your mind if god does not lead me i'm not going nowhere you may call me irresponsible but let me die waiting my soul weighs down upon the lord it's now a foreign experience to many of us to wait gone are the days that people will say i'm i'm waiting now, people just think waiting is fasting from six to six waiting means waiting the bible says except the lord builds a house listen very carefully it says they labor in vain build it except the lord watches over a city man of god listen businessman he says he says the watchman watched but in vain and my bible says it is vain to wake up early in the morning and then to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow only to eat the bread of sorrow i'm speaking to someone be tired of the bread of sorrow the bread of sorrow does not feel the bible says he gives his beloved sleep There are many pastors that just get up and feel anointed and just want to rent one small auditorium and punish themselves punish their wives punish the few people that believe in them because they think ministry is just about opening a place and then we have the gods to tell people come it's not that way paul a man approved of god jesus a man approved of god Is God speaking to us? We need to have results in our lives. We are still praying. But you see, God is not a herbalist. Now, there are systems. There is a way that he works. And one of the ways that he works is to direct men. And thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. Walk ye in it. And you will find rest for your soul. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying now? It matters. God is interjecting this miracle service to just minister to someone and say you are, you are hurrying up too much. You think it's breakthrough. You are running. You will soon find out that you've been around the same jungle. For someone after this service, you need to go and calm down with your life and say, I've been running since 2005. What have I done with my life? Absolutely nothing. Oh, come Lord Jesus come and direct me give me direction are we together the race is not to the swift and the battle is not to the strong not even bread for them that are wise when a man subscribe to the direction of God your life may look controversial for a while but all that will be before you is beauty and glory then your life will become Beulah and Hephzibah. 
the delight of the nations the excellency of waiting the hardest thing for a believer to do is to wait it's easy to rush it's easy to do a lot of things you will make more mistakes in your life rushing there is power in waiting are we together there is power in waiting we're going to pray for the sick now there's a lot to do tonight but listen very carefully if this message is for you then i want you to receive it from the depth of your heart you know when we come like this there are various things that the lord is doing to several people not everyone is sick not everyone is oppressed but a word can come and god says be careful there are people about to relocate now to regions they've not sought god they just assumed let me tell you something brothers and sisters there is no place on earth called greener pastures greener pastures is a spiritual location is where the voice of god for you is god is already helping someone how many nigerians smuggled their way through the desert trying to get to lands because they believe the only difference between your locality and any locality in the world is a greater propensity to discern appreciate and reward value that's all they have a greater propensity to discern to appreciate and to reward value you can be where you are if you are truly directed by god and he will come to you and bless you are we together now how many of you are trusting the lord to touch you or touch your loved ones we are going to do it very fast because the second session of this prayer i want to settle down and really really pray seriously and just dismantle a number of things in our lives the grand finale will be on friday but then you are here we're going to pray for the sick now i promise that we'll do that very early so that we can finish and then attend to other issues now you may not be sick listen carefully but if you are a man of god is an opportunity to watch lord what are you doing how does this thing work what can i learn you must remain a student we're all students in the school of the spirit ever learning but in this case in that learning coming to the knowledge of the truth are we together you are trusting god for a healing miracle if you are in overflow one now hold on i want to specifically minister to barren people myself so if you have any case of barrenness whether you are in overflow one two or three please i want to minister to you myself please make your way very quickly and come stand you're trusting god for a miracle let's do it very very fast there is a lot to do very fast the worship team will lead us and just charge the atmosphere for us while we do this very fast and then at the same time to save time at the same time your your requests your prayer requests if you're here and you're you're yet to write your prayer request go ahead you can spare a few minutes to just write it now please listen listen very carefully except whoever is laying hands on you maybe ask you or prophesize to you or does whatever you just once they touch you just go back to your seat some of you i notice they touch you and you move to the other side of the line and still stand it's unbelief praise the lord or you are saying okay you don't know my problem is here and you are touching here the lord is showing me something about this woman you don't have fallopian tubes at all oh my god they've removed it your husband got another wife Creator of the universe, what can you do? What can you do? trying to embarrass this precious lady i don't know you i'm just seeing you for the first time i'm not a woman 
so i can't pretend to say i know what is happening here but for a woman to not have fallopian tubes all removed and now it has scattered your marriage let me ask you a question and i'm asking it boldly do you believe that god can give you new fallopian tubes Where are you coming from? Madam, let me tell you, there is a God that sits in heaven. God is not a herbalist. He's a miracle worker. Put your hand on your stomach. Look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. In the name of Jesus. Father, that's all right. I decree and declare brand new fallopian tubes. The God that doeth wonders. Brand new fallopian tubes. I say it again. Brand new fallopian tubes. Madam, allow for some time and go and check yourself in the hospital. Give Jesus praise. Please help this woman. It's an elderly woman. Help her, help her. Social help her. In the name of Jesus, Mama God is delivering you in Jesus' name. The Lord is showing me somebody. It's just so long. You, you will sing, you will go back to your singing. I just want to. I'm seeing the someone, the power of God is going to come upon you here. You are here right now on the line. I want to prophesy to that person. I, I just saw a flash of light, a very strong anointing. Bring the person. The Lord is rolling away the reproach in your life. And the Lord is telling me he's breaking the power of witchcraft over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. Therefore in the name of Jesus I declare to you. Not only will you or your brother be healed. I decree and declare salvation comes to your family now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please sing for us that song, Creator of the Universe. Creator of the Universe. What can do? What can do?
looking at you in the realm of the spirit and I'm seeing fibroid. Is that true? How long? Seven years. Fibroid. Confirmed in the hospital. That devil is going to leave you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Do you have children, ma? I'm not married. You are not married? Oh my God. Now you be God, Almighty God.
say after me in the name of Jesus please shout it say in the name of Jesus I prophesy over the next half of this year hear the word of the Lord become for me seasons of signs and wonders lift your voice and begin to pray lift your voice and begin to pray everyone make sure you are praying Please keep praying, keep praying. Let it become for me season. 
signs of signs and wonders seasons of signs and wonders hallelujah say after me in the name of jesus please let's be serious say in the name of jesus every dimension of grace every dimension of the anointing required for my next level of exploits i receive it tonight in jesus name open your mouth and please pray every dimension Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen. That's the next prayer point. We prophesy everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be returned unto me. One more time. Restore unto you the years that the canker worm, the caterpillar, and even the palmer worm has taken. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that everything that has left my life and destiny that should not have left. I call you back by prophecy. Lift your voice and pray. In the name of Jesus. Declare that you might just be justified. Declare.
the name of Jesus Christ. Say it again in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare over my loved ones. Hear the word of the Lord. This is your season of rising. Lift your voice and prophesy over your loved ones. Please believe what you are saying. Prophesy. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus. This is your season of rising. A new level, a new dimension in the spirit. says the Egyptians you see today he said you will see them for no more forever I like you in the next five minutes everything that has attempted to mock God in your life don't be afraid open your mouth and declare that under this atmosphere of the anointing of the spirit you are leaving my life and my family forever open your mouth and pray declares thou that ye might as be justified pray don't entertain unbelief I cause poverty I cause failure pray Jesus cause the victory Jesus I decree and declare that my help comes from above I decree and declare that my help comes from the Lord and in this season I prophesy to my destiny a believer receive the help of God lift your voice and pray come for help Oh, my God. 
Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you this. Was he praying? Many of us here, all you need is the ministry of helpers. Are we together now? The psalmist said, I will lift up my eyes onto the hills. Do you know why he spoke about the hills? Because God used the strategy of the hill to protect the people. Every time there was war, he would lead them up the hill. And if they got there, there would always be victory. Remember Elijah. When, it, when there was time for any contest, he would say, go up the hill. Mount Carmel, Mount Zion, Mount this and that. And so he said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. But he said, no, no, no where comments my help he said my help the, the hill is only a strategy the hill is not my source and then he says my help cometh that means just like faith help to cometh faith cometh help cometh your help can come from other places by divination and witchcraft a man can attract a system of attention but he will pay for it listen Ebenezer is a revelation of the hand of God that can help a man. Blessed is a man that finds help from God. Many people are suffering because there is no help. Life can be cheap when there is help. Believe me when I tell you this. How much is the rent that the God of heaven cannot pay it? How much is the, what is the job issue with a single signature? A man's life can change but i told you every man who helps you has relatives who are in need it takes a grace and anointing to compel them to leave those who they are connected by blood and come to help you this world is too wicked for any kind of kindness to happen by default i'd like you to cry father in this season i'm ready to receive of the ministry of destiny help us please open your mouth and cry be serious some of you are looking at me pray pray name of Jesus was you praying this prayer session is a very major part of tonight's miracle service and I want you to pray because people are receiving results we are still going to pray over the issue of help let me tell you the truth brothers and sisters you see this ministry by the grace of God is a product of the help of God my life as a person is a product of the help of God it is vain my Bible says to wake up early in the morning and then to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow he said for he giveth his beloved sleep there are men of God that need help there are anointed people that need help there are intelligent graduates that need help there are married men and women that need help 
the holy spirit is called a helper the mercy of god can create a platform for help i've taught you this we are going to pray if you don't pray it will not happen i want you to be tired of your current level financially you all god can step in and you are value you are package your value but there is no system of placing a demand you must cry to the heavens lift your voice and pray from the depth of your heart prophesy to the north prophesy to the south prophesy to the east prophesy to the west where is the raven that came and fed elijah at the church? my god arise for me as a helper Shaka Barakatosh, Shaka Taka 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 when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, then we were like them that dream. And then said they among the hidden, the Lord had done great things for us. He said the Lord had done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again the captivity of Zion, like the streams of the Negev. Lift your voice and labor in the place of prayer. Everything that is alive grows. I provoke growth in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are still praying over the issue of help. Listen, you are going to pray for your loved ones. I know this about Africa. If you rise alone, you will not remain there. <clears throat> in Africa, as you rise, you pray for your loved ones to rise too. If you are the only successful person out of 15 people, they will stretch you and drain you. If Joseph and his brothers were also equally successful, they will not persecute him. But he was one out of many. I saw the sun, the moon, and 11 stars bowing to one person. And the brother said, no way. And they walked him out. My Bible says that a man's enemies shall be the members of his own household. Sometimes it's not binding and casting. Lord, show them mercy too. So that as I'm rejoicing, they will rejoice and leave me in peace. Are you ready to pray? Say in the name of Jesus. I provoke divine help over my loved ones. I prophesy to them that in this season, receive the help of the Lord. Lift your voice and pray for your loved ones. Financial help, spiritual help, career help. Help, oh God. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 37. And he took me in the spirit of the Lord. And he took me to a valley. And the Bible says that valley was full of bones. And it says the bones were very dry. Bones don't dry up in one day. It means they have been there for a long time. We want to visit age-long situations that have refused to go. You were born and you met that problem. You have become an adult. You have met that. No, no, no. It must go. That it has stayed long does not mean it's valid. Say in the name of Jesus. Every dry bone in my life and in my family hear the word of the lord i decree and declare let life come to you now lift your voice and pray prophesy life your father lost his job since 1991 till today he has not gotten a job Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. All ministry, hear the word of the Lord. All business, hear the word of the Lord.
the Lord. Oh destiny, hear ye the word of the Lord. The Bible declares that where the word of the king is, there is power. Hallelujah. And he said, Son of man, what seest thou? He said, Son of man, prophesy to these bones. And say, O bones, hear ye the word of the Lord. And all of that, he said, And as I prophesied, as I was commanded, there was a sound. And then a shaking. Notice that the bones began to look for themselves. Meaning they have the ability to restructure themselves. Kabbalah Kota Shikata. And then the bones were there, but there was no life. He says, Son of man, prophesy again to the four winds and say, O wind, breathe upon this slain. And the wind came and breathed upon the bones, and there arose an exceeding great army. Listen, God is able, God is able to turn a man's captivity overnight. He said, Have you ever heard that a city gives birth in one day? But he said, as soon as Zion travails, we know that birth is nine months. But something can happen to the rod of Aaron and it can burn overnight with no root. I like you to say, Lord, let the supernatural work in my life in this season. Business at a supernatural rate. Ministry at a supernatural rate. If it is the Lord's doing, then it must be marvelous in my eyes. Lift your voice and pray. As soon as Zion travails, as soon as Zion travails, she shall put forth a son. As soon as Zion travails, pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The apostle said, I desired once again to come to you, but Satan hindered us. Your breakthrough desired to come to you, but Satan hindered it. Your helpers desired to come to you. Have you seen a situation, Jimmy, where someone is about to bless you but before you reach your helper your enemy got there before you and told them something that turned their minds against you he said the rod of the wicked will not fall upon the lot of the righteous lest they dip their hands in iniquity please i'd like you to be angry in your spirit and pray we are not here to waste time Brothers and sisters, this is how victory is legislated and established in the kingdom. Are we together? It says, do not be ignorant of the devices, the methodologies from the word stratomai, the methodology of Satan. There are methods. It said, do not let your good be evil spoken of. Have you seen that that's a method? That I call you and Satan makes me interpret it as sarcasm. I just called you to say how are you and he says so you are mocking me it's, it's important that your good is interpreted as good Jesus went to a city and they didn't receive him do you think they just didn't please carry your healing rubbish and go how many men of God were sent by God to families to help them but the devil changed their perception over that grace say no 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 anything pastor they are all riffraffs they are beggars they are liars they are hungry people they just want my money it's a strategy someone wants to teach you something and help you say no this this guy don't no 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 I desired once again to come to you but Satan hindered us how many people today would have been helped by God are we together now you heard that they are applying jobs but the devil made you feel that just because there are people scamming people everywhere the job that was your own was a scam too and you sat down and said no way and today you are still employed we need to cry to God 
to help us know what is of God and what is not of God because many times they look the same is the spirit of discernment that will help you five people may be cheating you but the sixth person may be genuine and you can't you draw anybody that comes and then you remain poor and broke forever there are families today you never talk about anything good sir they gave us a prayer no 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 that's how that useless prophet came and prophesied and collected my hundred thousand don't bring any man of god here whereas the person who god was sending was like elijah to the widow of zarephath the fact that there is evil does not mean the grace of god is insufficient please listen to me there are people today who have been ordained to be blessed to listen but satan has clouded their minds so that they are cynical about everything that is god are we together i remember a few years ago i went to a house to pray for them i was invited and i got to the house i usually don't go to people's houses to pray for them and i went to the house and uh, um i just saw the man the, the owner of the house the sarcasm and the look that he was looking at me here they come these hungry young men again i tried to greet him i even held wine for them so that there's no suspicion and that man from what i saw didn't have up to two months to live and i sat now i was talking with the family and the man was just looking you know you know all this do do and leave my house until by the mercies of god god began to speak to him at the end of it it was him that escorted me out say ah, ah you are you are you know my friend collected my i said look at this man would have missed this miracle brothers and sisters some of our loved ones you know what i'm saying are like that their blessings kept passing for the last 10 years they organize a program near your house and they say no 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 once it is not you it is not god it's an error what of business opportunities just because people have been scammed here just because something came out and something happened there be anything business god forbid don't even mention anything oh sorry yes no 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 don't talk to me and then you remain poor and broke and say god what is wrong he told joshua be strong and of good courage in life it takes audacity to know when your opportunity comes 28 of genesis god came to jacob and jacob out of his fear and cynicism was not ready for that visitation the next verses would lead him to the house of laban where he learned by his pain by chapter 32 he was ready the bible says when god came again he held him he said whether you are not god i will hold you it's in your holding i will find out i won't let you go till you bless me he said what is your name he said jacob he said thou shalt no more be called jacob but israel for as a prince you have power with god and you have prevailed and he touched his tie and blessed him and the bible says then the sun arose and he called the name of the place peniel for he had met with god face to face i have seen god face to face and my life arose and the bible says then the sun arose because it is the breaking of the day that comes with joy for as long as it is night weeping endures are we together i want us to maximize these meetings let's not just come before god and fulfill the ritual and then share the grace and go back it's time for us to move the bible says how forcible are right words you are hearing something that is waking you up and challenging you are we together i know i took i think i took i don't know if it was a whole month or so to pray for destiny help us Hey, Jimmy, your life is stranded until a helper comes. I know this. There was a man who was so crippled he could not walk. And Jesus came to town. He heard about it but could not get there. But certain people came. Your helpers will insist till you are blessed. Listen, a helper is not a well-wisher. A well-wisher is just a sociological being with a sense of empathy. A helper is sent and ordained. His ministry continues till you rise. Some men came to David in a cave called Adullam and they vowed that we must make you king. You are seeing a man who is already weak. No result. 
ah, when your helpers come to you it will look like a charm there will be no reason for them to remain they will call you have you gotten the job sir no sir ah, after okay i'm going to abuja for you and you start saying i hope there's no string attached no 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 i only saw myself helping you in a dream are we together every destiny helper has those in need please hear me graduates hear me oh every space for a job has hundreds of thousands of others connected but when god decides to help you he said jacob have i loved jacob have i loved hallelujah jacob have i loved God changes the rules as if it's unfair to you. Haba, there is such a dimension. The helper of Israel. When you labor and labor and labor and labor, you'll be lying to say you are giving God glory. There are many testimonies that are just a product of carnality. The way you suffered for that miracle is why you cannot give it when God places a demand. Greed has an explanation. When you, when you acquire by labor and suffering and hardship, you can't give. But if it's freely you received, if freely you will give. Are we together? Your destiny is one helper away. By the privilege of God's grace, I've been privileged to be a destiny helper to many people. And overnight, they got jobs without interview. Just because I happen to know someone in a position of influence. And I say, sir, please there is someone can you help me i say apostle if it's you that's it the same way someone too has spoken it's the help of god we rise by his help your business will open up by his help everything you have is needed on earth but it takes god to connect you to a man who is unashamed about his need for your grace it is the help of god that brought us here brothers and sisters the help of God there are pastors that need the help of God you can blow balloon and put it around you can do everything and find out that the people come and say it's cold don't we take tea in this church and be sarcastic towards you yet somebody called by God to help you will stand in the rain and say I'm sent and I'm not going anywhere when last did you receive help in your life when last did you receive help Please hear what I'm telling you. Do you know if you do things alone and by yourself, you are not blessed? Even if you succeed in doing it. Help. Help. That God arises for a man and say, young men establish within 10 years, but I have chosen promise that in one month, I will do i will walk a walk in your life that if it were told you you would not believe hallelujah a few weeks ago someone called me he was he was he's planning on getting married and he went and collected the list just two or three weeks ago and the list was quite voluminous and it challenged him and he called me that he's trying to seek advice whether it's the will of God or not. I told him, I said, no, that, that is a foolish, that is a foolish concern. Are you seeing, the, you labored with a lady to go and meet her parents just because of the enormity of the list. You are now seeking whether it's the will of God, going behind. What is there to ask whether it's the will of God or not? Listen, I know that it looks like it's just a joke, but it's a serious issue. How many people have gotten high blood pressure because there is no help? No help. Ask the medical doctors, they will tell you. You buy a car alone. You look for food alone. You walk alone. You seek counsel by yourself. You advise yourself. No helper. You see people moving like Cain all around. Nobody to help. Nobody to advise you. Their pastor, Pastor Bolaji. Do you know sometimes Pastor Bolaji would call me 
and say man of god how is everything happening i hope here in the north there's nothing you know this and that you're fine everything and i say oh pastor you're a busy man why do you have to do this and he said we need to encourage ourselves and i said my god help 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 are you ready for god to really help you our message is by the grace of god are being spread on eagle's wings is by the spirit but is through the help of men 70 percent of the invitations where i go to somebody stands maybe in a church council to say bring this man of god i know see all these people from the north no 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 i know this one who knows you enough to speak for you at the gates because there are times you are not permitted to enter the chambers where your value is needed but it will take mordecai uh, mordecai mordecai is outside but mordecai needs to find favor with the king but it will take god using someone inside joseph is in the prison but destined for the throne a wine presser needs to split your case before the king one more time father listen listen whoever must rise up and be an instrument to shift me to the next level please send them to send them my way i want i i cry that you pray with all your heart men can be helped of god my help cometh from the lord there were many widows in zarafat they all needed help but to none was elijah sent except a widow in zarafat how about the rest there were many widows also needing help but god chooses to send a prophet to just one of them hallelujah the last prayer point and then we'll pray here the bible says according as his divine power please listen hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness to life i will never be the man of god who will teach you to live a defeated life at the expense of your spiritual growth no no there are matters that pertain to life there are matters that pertain to godliness his divine power covers them all so i can excel in the matters that pertain unto godliness and still excel in the matters that pertain unto life i should not serve god and tell my children to go and beg a neighbor for food he says since i was young now i am old i have not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed beg for bread you know many believers in their carnality and the depravity of wisdom they think that when you begin to focus about the matters of life it's a sign that you are becoming less spiritual i can tell you from experience that the pain that comes from the issues of life can make you ungodly are we together the ladies that go into prostitution do they go into prostitution with poor men the young men that join occults all these cult groups vibrant young people and the next thing you see they are in a devilish cult somewhere it's easy for us to criticize them but you will be surprised that it's from that occult they are feeding their families compassion is the ability to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity as a man of god i must be compassionate enough about your situation thank god for your spiritual life but i want you to do well that's what success means are we together i have food in my house right now but do you have food only a wicked man of god will enjoy and rise at the expense of the rising of others a true shepherd lays down his life doesn't climb on the ship some of you sow into my life i must teach you how others will also sow into your life it can't be all about me you are bringing seeds you are blessing me and i'm seeing the benefit of it to my spiritual life but how about you i came with a passion tonight if one person rises in a ministry alone is that a blessing no he called many sons to glory not a few 
there are many of you with business ideas there are many of you with ministries there are many of you desperately waiting for a job and men are beginning to say where is your god you are no longer young you have been praying and fasting and doing all of this if you cannot bring fruits that befit your work with god we will stop you from coming for koinonia or we will stop you from doing this and god wants to arise and prove himself mighty why won't you pray well when you eat well why won't you pray well when you the receipt of your children's school fees is being paid for i have the privilege by the mercies of god to support many families here and sometimes I, my eyes are full of tears after a powerful meeting and i see someone standing and say sir my children once upon a time two dear ladies here for five years a jimmy just to buy jam form beautiful wonderful godly ladies and that's exactly what satan wants after the prayer after falling under the anointing you get up and your needs remain and you sit in the night and say look can't i do something the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous lest they dip their hands in iniquity many of us have dipped our hands in iniquity simply because of the hunger that is in your belly was it not hunger that took israel to egypt talk to me was it prosperity that took them there no there was hunger in the land and israel had to go to egypt to look for food they went to egypt and stayed until they became slaves when they began to say it's time for our exodus pharaoh looked at them and said uh-huh you are beginning to find some level of convenience don't give them straw is because you are giving them straw that they have the time to even call upon the name of the lord leave them to find straw by themselves and they say moses don't go to pharaoh again every time you want to rise it's like a it's like a thermometer the devil tries to make sure that there is a harsh climate economically and otherwise i stand to tell you you can be of influence you can be prosperous and you can be spiritual jesus grew in wisdom in stature in favor with god and with men the lamb's wife is a balanced woman he said come and i will show you the lamb's wife he said and he showed me a city that was equal in length equal in breadth equal in depth any doctrine that does not preach that balance is not presenting the lamb's wife you are showing something else the lamb's wife is a balanced city the church of god must arise and help believers to do well in life this you see a lot of people prayer warriors torn trouser torn destiny you just see them move around you now go to say i want to marry you and the girl's father said if i ever see you near the corridor of my house he said but i praise i say so what we keep mocking the name of the lord there are many people do you know that the times that i've had counseling people a major reason why people backslide and leave god is that they get to a level in life now where the matters of life stand glaring before them and they are surprised that as spiritual as they are now the church started as a prayer meeting and you were doing well healing the sick now suddenly you have gotten to a size where you need rent and you just realize that per use is hundred thousand your prayer life just starts going down slowly all of a sudden you find out that your wife is pregnant and they say just bring something just to test and make sure she's fine say i don't have anything say well the god that we serve is a victorious god are we together many of you have the hearts to support the kingdom but the means is not there listen to me listen to me for as long as you are not empowered you will remain a slave in life i give you a guarantee for as long as you are not empowered you will remain a slave the anointing comes upon you but alongside the anointing is capacity for influence it took a man of influence called joseph of arimathea to get jesus from the cross it was not a prayer warrior that brought jesus from the cross a prayer warrior supervised his birth but a wealthy man supervised his resurrection we're a ministry of prayer we're a ministry that fasts we're a ministry of the word but we must be a ministry with results that are all around 
and Abraham was old and well stricken in age and the Lord had blessed him in all things not some things the last prayer point like Naaman you may be the captain of a great army the Bible says he conquered valiantly but he was crippled the one or two areas in your life I'm giving you a personal time of supplication now one or two areas in your life that must balance this equation to present Christ well let's cry together and say God you have done well in this area and I thank you but Lord I cry that in this area may your glory be represented in my life please lift your voice and pray please pray in my life keep praying be glorified be glorified cry to the Lord in my life be glorified be glorified you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor I just want to say thank you Lord you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor keep praying I just want to say thank you so many my life be glorified. Be glorified. It's in my life. Be glorified. Be glorified. Stretch your hands over the prayer requests and let's begin to pray. This is a representation of our pain. It's a representation of our needs. Just cry to the Lord. my God and my King the one who heareth them that call upon you arise in your majesty and turn these requests into testimonies it is unto you that answers prayer that we have come and Lord in the name that is above all names we provoke your integrity over these issues 
lord there are issues here that only god can solve some of the issues represented here are life and death issues we will search for you and we will find you we will find you with all our hearts we will lift our hands to you in worship and we will worship with all my heart lord i will search for you and i will find you i will find you with all my heart and i will lift my voice to you in worship i will worship you are god from beginning to the end there's no place for argument you are God all by yourself. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. I speak over this request in the name of the Lord God of heaven like he has done it before may every request here before god be turned now into supernatural testimonies may god turn every situation here to supernatural testimonies in the name of jesus christ just give me two three minutes and we're done. I want to speak over your life now. When you hold my hands, everything becomes possible. When you hold my hands, everything, everything When you hold my hands, of God represented here fresh fire upon your altar fresh fire upon your altar in the name of Jesus Christ every issue of concern in your career in your business and in your life I send the word of God like a messenger to reproduce the garden of Eden over your issue in the name of Jesus Christ When a man's ways pleases the Lord, he maketh even his enemy to be at peace with him. I declare, whoever must be at peace must be at peace with you to rise. I command peace to happen between you. Master, we have toiled all night. He said, nevertheless, at thy word, I want to prophesy to you where you failed before go back again with an anointing go 
wrapped up with the grace that makes men succeed in the name of Jesus Christ and the Lord visited Sarah and she called the name of her son Isaac he said all those who hear about this will laugh with me I introduce you to a new season of laughter 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 turn again our captivities like the streams of the naked I pray for you it will be like a dream of the night the way God will turn your life around anyone here under the plague of death any family represented here that the devil has vowed that they will not see the end of the year together in joy i decree oh death where is thy sting and oh grave where is thy victory i command death to pass from over you in the name of jesus he said let the people praise me and then the earth shall yield every ground can yield i command your ground to produce for you Amen. daniel chapter 2 and when you read from verse 28 downwards he said but there is a god that revealed secrets i pray for you the secret the mystery that you need to hold on to in this season that will shift you to a new level the kingdom truth the revelation of the spirit because the light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not the truth you need to lay your hands upon may my God open your eyes to see it and the Bible says that you shall be called all nations shall call you blessed and you shall be called a delightsome land is called Beulah and Hephzibah a land that is desirable and Isaac looked at his sons and said the smell of my son is like the field that the Lord has blessed I decree and declare may the fragrance of heaven that calls for favor to men may it come upon your life now in the name of Jesus Christ it says thou causes men to ride over our heads we walk through fire and through water but thou brought us into a wealthy place i decree and declare help even in the area of finances may it arise for you i say it again help even in the area of finances may it arise for you finally i pray for every family represented here and that includes those connecting with us online it doesn't matter what part of the world you are following from in the name that is above all names the lord has made a, declared, a declaration that this is our year of signs a sign and a wonder is a miracle with a message on it therefore i decree and declare may your life from tonight become an epistle of signs and wonders i say it again may your life from tonight become an epistle of signs and wonders in the name of Jesus wave your hands and give Jesus praise thank you Jesus hallelujah Paradventure, adventure you are here in this place tonight everyone please listen please no moving around let's honor the name of the Lord you are here you have seen what the Lord has done you've heard me teach and the Holy Spirit began to convict you to tell you that the time had come for you to make Jesus Lord of your life and to take him seriously I want to give you that opportunity right now there are people here saying apostle I've heard about God I've been around the things of God I've been around church I have a Christian name my father may even be a man of God my mother is an intercessor but I I declare my need for God tonight and then there are others here who are saying apostle I have given my life to Christ but at one point or the other I just found my life going haywire and I'm saying I need Jesus if you belong to any of these categories I like you to make a bold step overflow one overflow two the main auditorium you can walk and come out here and then overflow three you can go 
in front of your projector stand if you are there please make your way quickly let's honor them as they come the holy spirit is convicting someone don't wait for someone to come be the first god bless you koinonia are you appreciating them in the name of jesus christ there has to be someone making a decision for jesus god bless you god bless you keep clapping as they come win that war tonight win that war god bless you as you come it says he that cometh to him he will in no wise cast away make your way make your way to this front god bless you keep coming we have one minute for you if you're coming from outside please double up your steps very quickly very quickly say call for total surrender lord you gave me your life i'm giving you mine right now are there people still coming make your way very quickly apostle i'm not sure if i'm born again or not i've been around the things of god but i'm not exactly sure join them join them quickly when the titanic sank there were only two names those who were lost and those who were saved no in-betweens make your way quickly hallelujah i salute every one of you if you are joining them please join them very quickly overflow three you can move to the front of your projector those online giving their hearts to jesus just follow and pray along with us by faith in the name of jesus now i want you to lift your right hand sincerely you are not reciting a poem you are speaking to the lord and he's here listening to you say after me lord jesus say it again say lord jesus i believe in you that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you shed your blood for me i believe that you were raised up for my justification tonight i hand over my life to you and i receive your life in return i declare that the power of sin the power of the flesh the power of satan is broken over my life i declare that i'm a child of god i am saved the grace to walk in victory to walk in liberty is mine now in jesus name keep your hands lifted jesus i present to you the ones you died for we thank you for bringing these ones out no man can come to the father except you draw them lord jesus i pray that the grace that keeps men in this kingdom let it be supplied your people right now in the name of jesus christ i declare over your life and i decree that you are going forward ever and backward never in the name of jesus christ every challenge you came here with as a result of this new life let new victories come for you in jesus name i pray a big congratulations to you thank you so much now i want you to follow someone waving his hands there's a gentleman waving his hands there can i see who is waving his hands now please very quickly i'd like you to follow him all of you in concert just follow the gentleman there'll be a group of people to just meet with you very quickly and very briefly let's honor them hallelujah hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.